anything that God calls us to do, we want to be prepared. And sometimes we don't like that season of preparation. I don't like it. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you're like, oh, it's preparation time. That's, that's not me, okay? I prefer to just go after it. But the season of preparation is what gets us ready so that when the opportunity presents itself, we are able to succeed. That's what it's about. Hey there, family. Rachel D. Scott here. Thank you so much for joining me for another Bible study with me. And right now we are diving into the book of Nehemiah and it is so, so good. So if you are new to the channel, thank you for being on this side of the world where we want to grow and build a firm foundation in Christ. That is what we do on this channel. So we do that through the word. We do that through encouragement. We do that through just daily reminders of what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus and have a firm foundation so that life is not rocking us and shaking us and taking us away from really the source of help that we need. So thank you again for showing up, for being here. And I pray that as you are walking through the book of Nehemiah with us, it will bless you. We are studying the book of Nehemiah. And there are four things that we do during our Bible studies. The first one is that I have you read the Bible study. So you read it on your own. And then we come back together and I teach. I do a short teaching where we get to dive in and you can go more deep into the study. And I will share things with you that God has highlighted to me. But then you go back and you reread it because there are some things that God wants to show you that's just for you. And after you reread it, then we talk all about it in the comment section. So our comment section is kind of like the space after church where we get to talk and chat and talk about the sermon and what stood out and how it blessed me for the week and how it's going to bless me and how it helped me get through the last thing I went through. That's the comment section for us. So make sure you leave comments. Let's talk in the comments. I'm going to be in there. I cannot wait to see you as we dive deeper, but have conversation around what God is showing us. All right. Sound good? The other thing I want to tell you is that I have created a Nehemiah Bible study to go along with this. Now, you don't have to have it to participate and to join in the conversation. So don't feel like, oh my goodness, if I don't have the study, I'm going to miss something. It's actually not going to be something that you miss, but it's going to enhance and add to your time with God. Y'all, listen, I like to say that time with God is time we will never regret spending. There hasn't been a single time in my life where I said, oh, I spent all that time with God. Now look what happened. It's not going to happen. So I, I encourage you to go deeper with your time with God. And that is what this resource is intended to do. Sound good? So that'll be available for you in the description. After our time together, go ahead and grab that resource so that you can have that more intentional revelation and see what God wants to reveal to you. Okay, y'all. So let's dive into Nehemiah 2. As a reminder, if you are new here, the way we do this is that you are going to go and read it first. And I encourage you to read with your paper Bible. I love all the other Bible resources, but there's something that happens when we have the Bible with us. And if you are new here, I already revealed my Bible situation. It's a little rough, but it's mine and I love it. But I encourage you to read through the word for yourself. If you aren't able to read it, then go to an app and listen to it. Do whatever you need to do to read or listen to Nehemiah 2, and then we will come right back for a teaching. So as we are starting Nehemiah 2, what we're seeing is that after Nehemiah made his request to God, because remember y'all, we said the request has to go to God first. So he made his request to God in chapter one. And now in chapter two, he is getting ready to go to the king. Now, the thing was, he wasn't completely ready for this conversation, although he knew he had to have it. 
But the king recognized his continence. He recognized that he was down, that he was not his normal self. He recognized this about Nehemiah. And he asked Nehemiah, what's going on? So Nehemiah understood that it was not okay in that time to go before the king with a down presence, feeling sad or looking sad. He was actually supposed to always kind of go before him cheerful and happy as if everything were okay. So the fact that the king noticed his continence was not a good thing. It actually could have gotten him killed. But God was in the midst of this. And God had allowed it to happen the way that it did. So what we are reading here is a conversation that Nehemiah begins to have with the king who he has to get approval for in order for him to even begin to entertain this idea of going and rebuilding this wall. And he gets the approval of the king. But he doesn't only get the approval. He gets so many other things that almost seems like unusual that he would receive these things. But let me explain something to y'all. Nehemiah was a slave for the king. He was the king's cupbearer. This means that before, um, the, before the king drank any wine or anything that had to be consumed that was a beverage, Nehemiah would drink it first to make sure there was no poison in it, okay? And if there, if there were any poison in it, Nehemiah would die. But if there weren't, and then he was able to uh, reassure the king that it was safe. So it was really safety that we are seeing. Nehemiah was a safety for the king in that way. And so I love this moment where Nehemiah has a conversation with the king. And not only does the king say, yes, you can go. And yes, I will send letters to go with you to make sure that your trip is successful. But he also says that he's going to send an army with him. Why? Why would he send his army and his men with someone who's considered a slave? Because he was valuable to him. He was valuable to him. So he wanted to protect Nehemiah because Nehemiah was valuable to him. So as we read through Nehemiah, we see that there are three things that gave him favor in this situation as he went before the king. And we're going to talk about those three things right now. I want you to look at verse three of Nehemiah two, and I'm going to read it with you. But I replied, long live the king. How can I not be sad? For the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire. The first thing that he says to the king, when the king says to him, why is your continence down? Why are you sad? He says, long live the king. He honors the king first. Now we see that same thing happen in chapter one where Nehemiah acknowledges and honors God first. He does the same thing as he is about to make a request to the king as he shows him honor. Verse five, I reply, if it pleases the king and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. Again, honor if it pleases the king. There was no entitlement here. Nehemiah understood that at the end of the day, it didn't matter how good the king was to him. He was still the king. He still had rulership over him. And because Nehemiah understood that in the natural, he understood it in the spirit. And in the spirit, he understood it. So he was able to um, display it in the natural. This is why it is so important for us to understand how to honor God. Because when we know how to honor God, we know how to honor others. And this is what we see is happening with Nehemiah. He's able to honor the king from his posture of knowing how to first honor God. All right, so that's the first thing that I want to share. The second thing I want to talk about is this idea of value. Let's look at verse six. The king with the queen sitting beside him asks, how long will you be gone? When will you return? After I told him how long I will be gone, the king agreed to my request. Why would he ask Nehemiah that question? OK, if he was he already knew in his mind, if it was a no, he wouldn't even ask that question. It wouldn't even matter. Not, the answer would have been no. But he asked the question because he was considering the request. And so he wanted to know more information. And what I love about this so much is that Nehemiah was able to provide him with more information because he was prepared. Nehemiah had prepared himself prior. I talk about this in my book, Taking the Five Leaps, about how Nehemiah was prepared for the request that the king was presenting to him and how important that is whenever we are going into a new assignment is being prepared. 
So although he was nervous and he was a bit intimidated, I'm sure he was talking to the king about something no one had ever done. Okay. It wasn't like he could say, well, you did this for this person and you did this for that person. He couldn't do that. It was just Nehemiah the first time doing this, asking the king as a slave for something that a slave should not even be asking for because he shouldn't even be able to ask for that or request this thing. But he understood that what he was doing, he had to be prepared for. Anything that God calls us to do, we want to be prepared. And sometimes we don't like that season of preparation. I don't like it. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you're like, oh, it's preparation time. That's, that's not me, okay? I prefer to just go after it. But the season of preparation is what gets us ready so that when the opportunity presents itself, we are able to succeed. That's what it's about. And so Nehemiah knew, I don't want to just go rebuild the wall. I want to succeed at this. And in order for me to succeed, I need to be prepared so that when the opportunity comes for me to talk to the king, I'm not fumbling over my words. I'm not going back and saying, oh, I need to figure this out or figure that out. I can say, I need this, this, and this. Will you help me? Okay. So back to the point is that he was valued. He was a valued resource in the kingdom. Mm, that'll preach right there. Are you a valued resource in the kingdom? Are you valued because Number one, you honor your king. And number two, you recognize the assignment that you have been given. All right. Now, okay, because this could turn into a whole different message, a whole different Bible study. So let's go to verse nine. And it says, when I came to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, I delivered the king's letter to them. The king, I should add, had sent along army officials and horsemen to protect me. And we talked about this in the beginning. Why would the king send army officials and horsemen to protect a slave? Because he was valuable. Because he was worth protecting. Because he was like, I would rather lose all of you than lose this man right here. That's powerful. That's not an ordinary calling. That's not an ordinary person. That means that he did his job and he did it well. That is what we are seeing here. But then if you think about it, this is the reason I believe God called Nehemiah. Because he knew that Nehemiah would do the job and he would do it well. And just as he was valuable to the king, he was valuable to God. So not only was he protected by the king, he was protected by God first. And God encouraged the king to protect him in the way that he was, okay? So I want you to see how value is not just a natural thing. It's spiritual too. It is very, very much so spiritual. And I love how he said, might I add, you know, let me just say this too, that he sent people to, to protect me. He was aware of how odd that might have been. But yet, it also gave him a different posture when he went before the other kings, because I'm sure they were looking like, well, if he was just an ordinary slave, he wouldn't be sending army men and officials to make sure he didn't get hurt. So let me make sure I take good care of Nehemiah. Nehemiah's name was known, y'all. He was known. He was, he was building a reputation of honor and value. And that's amazing. And that's what we want to do. Okay. Woo, y'all. I'm telling you, the story of Nehemiah blesses me every, every time. Okay. So, now let's talk about the third thing, which is wisdom. After the king thoughtfully considers Nehemiah's request, he says yes to him, of course. And so Nehemiah goes out and he gets all the things that he needs, the resources that he needs. And then he goes to survey the land. And he does it in such a intentional way because he doesn't want to get caught. He doesn't want anybody even know what's going on. Nehemiah teaches us something so powerful in this. I want to take a look at verse 12. He said, I slipped out during the night, taking only a few others with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put on my heart for Jerusalem. We took no pack animals with us except the donkeys I was riding. What is this showing us? Nehemiah had to be very intentional. The Bible tells us to be wise as serpent and harmless as doves. Nehemiah was practicing wisdom in this moment because he knew that there were enemies all around him. He knew that the wall had not been rebuilt, which means that, that the people within the wall could be attacked. 
He knew that if anybody saw him, it could build up a ruckus. Did you see Nehemiah's in town? Did you see him with all the horsemen? Did you see, did you see, did you see, did you see? And it would get back to the enemies and it would infringe on the plan of God. Because remember he said the plans that God had put in his heart, it would infringe on the plans of God. And so what did he do? He kept it to himself. Now, y'all, this is hard. Now, this is hard for me, too, because I get excited when God tells me to do something. I get it. Well, sometimes. Sometimes I'm scared. <laughs> okay. But but I get excited eventually. <laughs> sometimes I get nervous. I'm like, oh, Lord, how am I going to do that? But when I know that it's a plan of God, I'm like, well, it's your plan, not mine. You got this. And I know you do. And so Nehemiah knew that what he was working on was a plan that God had put in his heart. He had already seen the evidence of God's faithfulness as he was going through the journey of asking the king and being shown favor and being protected. And so he didn't want to mess it up. So he was like, we are going to have to be very discreet as we go and we try to find out what's happening and what's been going on because he had been away from it for so long. Okay, it had been a while since he had been even there. We talked about that with chapter one. And so now he's going and he's surveying the land, but he's using wisdom when he does it. And from this place of wisdom, Nehemiah is then able to share with the nobles and the officials and all the people what it is that God has led him to do and why he is there. It didn't get messed up. The plans didn't get thwarted because he kept his mouth closed. Y'all sometimes. We talk too much. Sometimes we need to keep it shut. There's a book that I've read that's called Keep It Shut. We need to close the mouths and we need to let the thing that God has placed on our heart brew for a little bit until he leads us to the next step. And it can be hard. We want to share with our friends and our best friends and our cousins and our aunties and, our aunt, and, and all of them and our uncles and all of those people. Okay. But we want to learn to know how to treasure what God has put a place on our heart. I think about Mary, um, Jesus's mother, and how she was able to treasure the words, treasure the things that happened with Jesus. It is not something that comes naturally to all of us. And treasuring doesn't mean, okay, I'm gonna just hold it and hold it and just see what happens. I'm not saying to just sit there. Nehemiah actively did something, but he just didn't go and tell the whole world what was going on, the plans that God had given him until it was time to release those plans. Wait for the release. Wait for the release. Don't jump ahead. God will show you when it is time. And when it is time, it will not compromise what it is that he has asked you to do. Okay. So as we wrap our time up, I have two last things that I want to share with you. Favor with God and man comes from a character of honor, value, and wisdom. Those are character traits that you want to carry. Honor, you want to honor others. You want to value others and you want to have wisdom. The reason why Nehemiah was able to do so many things is because he valued others. So others valued him. He honored others. So others honored him. He had wisdom. So he was able to receive wisdom. He was able to receive wisdom from others. He was able to give wisdom as well. He received wisdom from God. So he was able to give wisdom to them as they were rebuilding the wall. Okay, so that character that he chose of honor, value, and wisdom in the spirit realm gave him access to things in the natural realm. The other thing is, it's the unseen things we carry or possess that open or close doors in our lives. You can't see wisdom, you can't see honor, and you can't see value. But those things open and close doors in our lives. And so we want to be people of honor, who carry the wisdom of God, and who value God and others so that he can be revealed through our lives in an amazing and powerful way. Y'all, this has been such a great time. Be sure to chat in the comments after you reread the chapter yourself. What does God reveal to you? I've just done the teaching and now it's your turn. I want to know, what does God show you from the book of Nehemiah that is blessing you? What revelation has he given you? Let's go deep in the comment section so that others can be blessed by our discussion. All right? Okay. Well, I will see you in Nehemiah chapter three.